Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Fix the XJ6. If you've been keeping up with the series, you will know we've had a few delays and a few problems along the way. Uh, but it gave me the opportunity to make a video to explain how suspension works. And I mentioned in that video that I was going to make a video replacing the fork seals in the suspension. Um, if you want to see a video about how suspension works, it really does help you understand how to do this job. Once you know how something works, you know why you have to do certain things. I'm going to explain how I do this um, start to finish pretty much. Apart from the fact that this is already off the bike, but that varies between bike anyway. But normally it just involves taking the wheel off, taking the brakes off, undoing the clamps and sliding this out. But something you should remember to do before you take it out of the bike is just crack this top cap uh, so it's loose because it makes it so much easier because this actually spins in here. So trying to undo that while holding it, unless you have a specific clamp to do it, uh, is quite difficult. First thing I'm gonna do is clean this thing up. As you can see, we've got some dirt around, not too much. Uh, and we've also got these marks from where the yokes clamp on you got a bit of well, it looks like rust But it will probably come off with a bit of WD-40 and, and rubbing Now I'm going to use a scarer. This isn't a new scarer. This is just a green one So it's not that aggressive and it's also old so it's you know It's it's been used and I'm just going to gently rub without any real pressure just the weight of my hand over those rusty marks and you're not looking to completely remove the marks, there will be some from where the yolks are. And in a way, it's kind of helpful to have a slight mark there so you know where to put them back. Oh, another little tip, actually, before you take your forks off, is to measure the distance between the top of the cap and where your yoke starts. And then you can make sure you put it back to the same and you've got your suspension back where it belongs. If you do have rust on your stanchion, and it's in this section here and you've got pitting, you may have a problem because what happens there is that the oil from, when it goes in, the oil can get into that hole and when it comes back out, the seal doesn't wipe it off, it holds it in the hole and you can lose oil that way. So if you have very rusted stanchions and there's pitting in the moving area, the working part of the fork, which depending on the traveler, the fork's probably about this much, um, you know, something like this, if it's there, you can have problems. If it's above the yolks, it's absolutely fine. But when you slide the seal down, they can tear the inner edges of the seals. So it's worth cleaning this up and make sure you get just, let's say, I can't get these marks fully off, but I can make sure they're smooth so there's no damage to the uh, new seal. There we go. You can still see the line from where the uh, yolk was, but there's no feel to it. It's smooth. Now it's time to drain it. Some have drain holes. Um, this doesn't. This is just a pinch bolt. Depending on who, um, what suspension you have this may or may not be that preloaded as in the cap might want to fly off i know from doing the other one or taking it apart shall i say that these don't have that much pressure on them so yeah there you go that was it so this is going to vary from bike to bike but generally the rule is the same pay attention to things that you take out. If you're unsure, take photographs along the way. Most of this you won't get wrong, but there's things like remembering which orientation certain things are. So, top cap. And we need to get the tube out. Like so. Then the next thing down there is a washer. Now at this point we can actually compress the fork down, this washer out, and this washer is sharp side down. On some washers there's a rounded side and a sharp side. I just return things to the way they were. So sharp side down for the top washer. Right, then there's the spring. Now you can take this out now, but if you do, sorry, here's the spring. Oh, your, yeah, oil goes everywhere. So best thing to do, I find, is uh, drain the oil now before you take the spring out. That is not the right color. Then you need to pump it. Get that oil out of the damper at the top. Now if you know yourself or you've watched the video about suspension that I made, you'll know that these are a standard fork, not an upside down fork. Um, and they have different ways of taking them apart. I've done a video series on my DRZ400SM and I took them apart and showed how to do those there. And they have cartridges and all sorts in them. These are a very simple set. Right, I'm not going to bother cleaning that too much because I need to pop this back in. Um, that way around. The reason I need to pop this back in now the oil's out is because I need to loosen the damper rod. Now the damper rod, as I show you in a minute when I get it out, normally has a hexagonal head on it or some flats or something you can put a tool in there to hold it. Because basically it lives in the bottom of the fork here loosely 
but it's screwed in with uh, an Allen and a crush, an uh, Allen headed bolt and a crush washer here, which pins it in place. But obviously, once you undo it the first turn and it loosens it, then it just spins the whole thing. So you, what you normally use is a holding tool in there. For some reason, the ones on this Yamaha have no marks to them um, to put anything in there to hold it. So a technique I got, a tip from Jake the Garden Snake, mate of mine. Ow! It's not that. Let's put a few turns on it. With the spring and everything back in, that puts pressure back on the damper rod. Then, if we use an impact driver, we should undo this, no problems. Impact drivers don't turn as such, they hit and it undoes things in where they stand. So if you've got something that spins and you want to loosen it, you can. You don't need as much clamping force on it to undo it with a, uh, with a rattle gun than you do compared to, you know, a socket because that's a continuous torque that comes up and goes down. This is going bang, 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 super fast. Moment of truth. Well, that's, that's really in there. Come on. All right, so I've got some pieces of wood in a vise, and I'm gonna use the two uh, caliper brackets that are in line to put that in there and clamp that down. Gotcha, I went backwards and forwards a couple of times. Top cap back off, tube out. Then washer, that's sharp side down. Then, the, oh God, the spring. Every time you think you've got all the oil out of this, you haven't. Okay, then the next thing that's gonna come out is our damper rod and a spring. Spring goes there, damper rod's in the middle. So this is the damper rod, and in the top of it, there would normally be a shape. So people who know what I'm talking about, see, it's completely round. There's nothing to grab onto at all in there. Uh, so that's why I have to do it the way that I've been doing it. But uh, the bolt that goes in the bottom ends up going into this damper rod and keeping it in place on the bottom of the fork. As I say, watch the video to learn how it works. But anyway, that goes there. Um, I guess the far end will be that end, so it's gonna be those. Right, so now we need to remove the dust seal. So the dust seal is just here and you just have to carefully pry it up. Don't try and do it from one place. Just give it a pry, move around a bit. I snapped the end off of my handy pick. You can also use a screwdriver. A little pry here. A little pry there. go so dust seal off now in here there is a retaining clip and uh, depending on what type of fork it is some of them have a little thing you can get hold of and some of them don't um, I found that the best tool to get this one out was the pick that I just broke let's try this I've got a tiny little screwdriver I might just be able to get underneath it or behind it or I'll snap the screwdriver probably snap the screwdriver no 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 we got it we got it there we go right see that and if you run your screwdriver like this, it'll naturally pop up. Retainer clip. Now that's undone, the seal clip is out, we can get this out of the way. It's done is by using this as a slide hammer to knock it all out. However, looking at the amount of dust and corrosion and stuff that's around here, and the fact that I've taken the other one apart first, I'm gonna put a little bit of WD-40 around here and hope that it breaks some of the crud because getting the last seal out was a bit of a pain. And you want to get a really good hold of this part, or put it in a vise, and then pull hard and hit. So you should be able to see that the seal is lifting up now. It's getting further and further out. So any second now. There we go. Right. Now in here is a cup that goes that way around. So again, if you've watched my video on suspension, you'll know what this all is. Uh, but one of the important things to note on yours is the orientation of this washer here. It'll be next to the seal. Uh, this is sharp side 
this edge is square, this side is beveled, it's sharp side up. And also note that the seal itself, which we will slide off the tube going to the top, where we unscrewed it, keeping the same orientation. Okay, so this is the part we're actually changing. This is the fork oil seal, um, and there is also the dust seal, which you saw me take off earlier on. These have two sides to them. One side, you can see, it's got a little rim, but it's quite flat. On this side, it's more cupped, and you can see a little edge with a spring behind it, and that is holding the wiper edge of this against the stanchion. And the cup side, on, in this example, goes towards the oil it's retaining. So the, the flat side is to the world, and this side is to the medium which you're containing. I think that generally is a, is a hard and fast rule that seals the cup side will go to whatever you're containing, and the other side goes to the outside world, but it may not always follow, so I'm not gonna claim that. Just pay attention to the way that it is on yours. Right, so now we have the washer to remove. Just take that up and off. Remember that was sharp side up, so it wants to go like that, but I'll remember it. You then have this part here, which is like a guide. Uh, these, you see here, it's just got a split in it. You don't need to use a screwdriver really with these normally, just use your nails, if you got some, and just splay it very slightly to get an edge up and over, and then it will just pull off. So now what I need to do is clean up all of these parts, clean all my bench up, and then we'll be nice and clean to put everything back together. Uh, I'm gonna use brake cleaner to clean this, but you can use other solvents which are suitable. Also handy as an airline if you've got one to blow through everything. That spray, that spray. To clean the inside of this, I'm just gonna spray a bit of brake cleaner down there. Get a ball of kitchen roll. Shove that down there. Use a stick to push it down. Whoop. All the way. Slide that out. And then you can blow that out with an airline, but I actually have a lighting boom that will do the job for me. Okay, so you can see that's come out absolutely filthy. We can run another one down there dry. Right, you should be able to see down there now and see that's nice and clean. I've just had to do it a few times, just putting it through again and again, just to clean the inside out. There's also an O-ring on the top cap that can be replaced if it needs to be. Um, this was sealing fine, it looks fine. I'm gonna try it. I don't actually have one of the O-rings. I thought I had one of them, but I don't, so I'm gonna see if it's okay. Obviously, best practice, best practice is to replace it. I don't know why, but whenever you spray brake, brake cleaner in here, it always makes this noise. <laughs> so now what I've got to do is clean up the inside of the stanchion. Same sort of deal. So I've got lots of kitchen roll because I know this is a much bigger hole. There we go, all shiny and clean. You also notice I used the Dremel to clean up the seat of the seal and the retaining clip groove because it had a lot of sort of salt and crud in it. Note, I don't advise you do that unless you're using something like a brass brush and you're going very slow. If you use steel on this, because it's aluminium, it's gonna scratch it up. Brass could still do that, uh, but I was going very slow, very light, and just really keeping in that groove just to dig it out because the retaining clip, this thing, is the only thing, two of these, holding your suspension together. Two of these. Right, so now that's all the parts cleaned and wiped down. Now I need to get rid of all this dirt and grime, put down some fresh clean things, get some clean cloths and wipe everything over again just to make sure that there's nothing on them. Right, so now we're ready to reassemble and this shouldn't actually take very long at all. We've got our new dust seal and uh, oil seal and we need a plastic bag. I need to rip the top off of that. I'm just going to put the bottom end together first. So you want to put the ring over here. Then you need to put the spring and the damper together. Now that's come out. But you want to try and protect the new seals going on. So the oil, and also put some oil on it. So I'm using some fork oil that I've got, which is the fork oil I'm going to be using. And just put oil all over this and all over the seal. You're doing this to just try and increase lubricity and get the thing to move without catching anywhere. So cover it in oil. 
Then remember that the open cup goes towards the medium and we know that goes inside, so we can then put this over here. Slide down past the plastic and past there and it lives about there. Remember, rounded side towards into the fork, sharp side towards the um, seal. So we need to put this on and this should fit over everything. There we go. There, and then we've got this split ring guide. Also lives up here. Because these pieces live inside here. That belongs on there spring tube blah 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 yeah okay so we're good so now what we need to do is put the damper rod into here slide that all in i'm going to pop the bolt and the crush washer in you should replace the crush washer if it's been destroyed you should replace it every time anyway really to be fair but i'm going to try and get away with it Use this piece of wood to pin the damper rod. I just want to get the first few turns in. Go up a bit more. Okay, so that's grabbed. So now our damper rod's held in place. As I say, you should do the proper torque settings and use a torque wrench, etc. But a lot of people will just rattle them on. I may need to give it another whack when it's all together just to make sure it's tight, but don't go too crazy with it. Obviously, you don't want to split, uh, strip stuff. Okay, apologies for the slight continuity change. As you can see, I've got another one out now because I did the first one and it took a long time and I realized why basically this collar didn't want to go in. Try it again. It appears it's going to be a pain on both of them. Come on. Please. Okay, right. This time I'm happy. Gonna lube up the seal a little bit and just hope that helps it. Right. Hold on a second, it's me from the future. I'm just editing this video now and I realized I didn't explain this part of the video well enough, uh, especially as I walked into some problems and I'll explain why that happened in a moment. So let me just quickly explain the process of what I am doing at the moment. So this is a seal driver. It comes in two pieces. You have one of these, which normally has three pieces of plastic on it. Word to the wise, don't buy one of these off Amazon for 18 quid. It will break immediately. Um, <laughs> but anyway, this normally has three pieces of plastic on it and you can adjust this to adjust for the size of the stanchion. And you put it this way round and it sits in there and then you slide this up and down which is protected and it hammers in each part of the forks. If you can imagine that this, oh, this piece here is this piece here. So this is the shape of the inside of the fork and this is the guide, that split ring which I need to get in first. So you want to slide that down into the hole and then you want to use your uh, slide hammer to knock that down and you need it to go all the way down. Because the next thing that just sits on top of it is the washer and that's why it's rounded on this corner and flat on this side because the flat side goes towards the seal and the rounded corner sits inside the fork. If it was a sharp side I guess it would dig into it. So that's, you know, logic can help you work this one out. Then you have the actual seal itself and then you have the hole and the retainer clip here. So, easy peasy, you knock that one in, that one just sits there, you then knock this one down in, uh, it all seats down, pop the retainer ring back in, and it will make a lovely click like this. However, I didn't get a click like that to start with, and the reason why, for me, and I've got a Patreon exclusive actually doing this, but it's much easier to just tell you in this video, um, I realized, I couldn't get this ring in properly because none of this had seated right because the original bottom guide ring hadn't fully seated and I for the life of me could not work out why this was until I suddenly thought about it. These forks will be assembled in a factory which is maybe I don't know 15, 20 degrees something like that. Um, it was like three or four in my garage and aluminium which this outer is made of 
contracts and expands with heat. All metals do. All materials do to a point uh, but i think aluminium does it more than steel so what was ended up happening is because it was so cold this ring would not fully seat which wasn't allowing to get the next thing the next thing but wasn't allowing me to get the ring in properly so what i did was i warmed up the outside of the housing here with a hot air gun not too close to you know damage the paint i just didn't get it warm so it was just like a nice like if you've got cold hands it's nice to hold on to not hot uh, and that will let this expand. I then gave everything a good whack with the seal driver again, and it all sunk down, and I was able to put the clip in, and that was the click that you heard. That was from that little Patreon exclusive. As I say, if I'd made this video as long as the problems that had popped up, <laughs> it would be unwatchable. I'm trying to make this understandable um, without hiding any issues that come along, and also teach a lesson, which is, if they're really cold, you're going to have a bit of a deal to get them in. So maybe keep them inside and then do the job. But yeah, so there you go. Hopefully, hopefully you now understand how this works and how it all seals. Oh, and of course, don't forget that on the top here goes your dust seal. Okay, so now it's time to do the dust seals. Uh, however, I do need to give you a bit of an update because you might notice some things about these forks are now a little bit different. Uh, that is because the first set of dust seals I was sent were a, just a tiny, tiny bit too big, about 0 0.3, 0 0.4 millimeter too big. Um, and I spoke to Emoto about it and they ordered in some OEM seals. Now, if you don't know what we're talking about here, OEM is the seals that the manufacturer make. They're branded normally to their company uh, and they are the seals. They're normally also expensive. You can get third party seals, which are much cheaper. They're the same size and they do the same job and they're perfectly good. And as I say, they're, they're much cheaper. Occasionally you get some size mix-ups. Um, as I say, the first set I was sent were a bit too big. Well, in between uh, Wemoto ordering some OEM ones to check the measurement of the ones they originally sent me to make sure that they haven't got a mistake, I ordered another set from a completely different supplier, uh, from a different manufacturer, and these were also too big. Now, wondering if I was doing something wrong here, I actually went to a garage and said, hey, can you try and fit these dust seals? And he couldn't either and said, no, they are too big. So it isn't just Wemoto. It seemed like it was everybody. There's some sort of mix up about the size of seals. Uh, Wemoto, as I say, ordered in the OEM seals to measure up so they know exactly what size their parts need to be, uh, which is great. So they're going to resolve any issues there. And then they sent them to me so I can use these. So I now need to pop these dust seals on. Uh, I really hope these fit. What I do know is that these are about 0 0.3, 0 0.4 millimeter smaller than these ones uh, so in theory like the other stock ones they should just push in the reason the fork protectors are off of these is because i couldn't get the seal driver down the side of it to be sure to hit all the way around evenly and i wondered if that was something to do with it so i looked in into how you take these off and the way you can take these off which you're not supposed to do is you can warm them with a heat gun and they soften up and then they'll pop off uh, and they've gone back to solid plastic so to put these back on i will need to warm them and put them back on uh, and make sure i do it in the right direction but anyway that's going to come in a minute because the first thing we have to do is just try and fit the dust seal so we put our little baggie over here I am going to give this every chance I can, so I'm going to use a little bit of silicon grease. Just a tiny, tiny smear, just to, you know, stop it not wanting to move. Uh, it's important to use the right sort of grease on stuff like this, because this won't make the rubber swell or anything weird like that. Basically just greasing up around here and around here. We slide that over. Slide it down. And now we want these to push in by hand, ideally. Which it's done. <laughs> I'm so happy. You have no idea. <sighs> Fantastic. Right. So I need to put these back on. Uh, do they have a right and a left? No, they are identical. Uh, so these go over here. They might click back on cold. I don't know for sure, but they definitely want to go forward at the way that the calipers face. now yeah there we go and they fit in like so when they cool down they'll lock on again there we go so now the dust seals are in 
that was easy. <laughs> We're going to now put the, uh, the oil in. Now you need to find out from the oil manufacturer's service book or from somewhere that's reliable what weight it takes and also what amount. Now I've asked uh, Hazelmere Motorcycles actually, they helped me out, thank you very much to them. And they found out that it takes 10 weight and it also needs 470 mils per leg. So I'm gonna measure out 300 mils and then 175. I'm hoping that'll account for the bit that we lost in the bowl. And a little bit too much is fine. We just need to make sure it's even between the two. And I've made a tool to do that. I'm hoping it's long enough. Now you can get specialist holders and things to do this. Uh, well, you can do it by hand, but because I need to film it, I need to have it held. So I've modified a uh, handlebar brace and just do it up enough that it grips with the rubber, but don't crush the tube. I mean, these are strong, but you don't want to make them any out of round. And you also want to make sure that the leg is fully extended. We have done up the nut on the bottom, so we can just fill this with this 300 and then put the other in. That was a cool sound. That was the sound of the uh, oil. Oh, let's get rid of all of it. The oil going into the damper. Okay, then we just need to run it up and down just a little bit until all this gurgling stops because that's when we know that all the air bubbles will come out and we can trust the level. So, I, oh, and you might not be able to see, I'm basically lifting up and down the bottom leg but not too far. I'm now slightly concerned my tube is not going to be long enough. <laughs> and it is not. It's not long enough. Um, well, I know how much I put in. So I'll put the spring and the washer and everything in and see if that brings the level up enough that I can reach it and then I can do a after spring installed. Okay, so pop the spring in. Gently. Gently. Then the washer. By sheer dumb luck, if I go down to that mark there on the tube, it leaves a very slight oil ring just on the tip, which means it's exactly that length. So this tool was great, but the straw was too short. How annoying. Spacer tube. And then we need to get the cap on, and this is going to be interesting because this is going to have to compress slightly. Let's do those up. Okay. I'll remember to give those a nip once they're back on the bike and they're held in the yokes, but that will be clamped. I've now got the leg on the floor and I'm pogoing on it. And we have no oil marks, just a nice clean stanchion. One down, one to go. Spring washer that just flipped on the way down. This is all good. Top goes on. Cap goes on. And you want to start it by hand so you don't cross thread it and push as you're doing it. Oh. Well there we go. They are done. I am very very happy. Uh, I've pogoed them as in like press them up and down and they're not leaking. They both feel very even. They are great. So other than nipping the top caps up and just giving the bottoms a quick whack with the impact gun when they go back on the bike, they are done. So I can say now, finally, that the next video will be putting the suspension back on the bike, getting the wheels on the bike, changing the chain and sprockets. Oh, it's going to be great. Oh, I might need to dump the coolant first just for ease. I'll probably do that first. But anyway, the point is there's forward progression now. Finally. My God. There is a lot more still to do to this bike. I've still got a box of parts that are going to get fitted and jobs to be done. The hell lines need to go on. These are the old seals. Mementos of a hellish time. 
What I'm hoping you've seen from this video is that fork seals are actually an easy job to do, especially on something like this. If everything goes right like it normally does, and it's just Sod's Law that did this in this video, um, it's an easy job and you can save a fortune doing it. It's one of the things that I think all bikers need to learn to do. Changing your own chain and sprockets and doing fork seals will save you a fortune. Anyway, until the next one, please smash that like button. Join Patreon if you can. Uh, I know it's a difficult time in the world right now, but it is a little as a buck a month. And for that, you get access to videos three, four, five days early. It gets me part of the Discord, which is very active. And there's also the Patreon exclusives. It's well worth it. Try it out. Want to try it for a month. Anyway, catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.